Hello and welcome to ILTV's Evening Update. I'm Aaron Porras, here with the latest news from Israel. The Defense Ministry said on Monday that Israel will ease some travel restrictions on the Palestinians in honor of the upcoming Muslim holiday of Eid al-Adha. The Coordinator of Government Activities in the Territories, Major General Yoav Mordechai, announced that the ministry will permit 100,000 West Bank Arabs to visit family in Israel. In addition, border posts will operate for longer than usual to enable Palestinians, including Gazans, to travel abroad via Ben Gurion Airport or Amman. Goods will be permitted to pass through checkpoints as late as 7 p.m., and as in the past, married men aged 45 and above and women over 30 will be permitted to pray at the Al-Aqsa Mosque on the Temple Mount. For Gazans, permits to visit the Jerusalem Holy Site will only be provided for those 60 years old and older. Eid al which is marked by some Muslims with the Hajj pilgrimage to Mecca, is slated to begin on or around September 12th. In other news regarding the Defense Ministry, Defense Minister Avigdor Lieberman is set to meet in London on Wednesday with U.S. Secretary of Defense Ash Carter. The agenda of the meeting has yet to be made public, but Defense Ministry officials said the two men will discuss a series of matters, likely focused on security, strategic, and bilateral issues. Lieberman met with Carter at the Pentagon on June 20th, during his first visit to the U.S. since being sworn in as Defense Minister in May. According to a statement from the U.S. Defense Department, the two men reaffirmed the strength of the U.S.-Israeli defense relationship and the United States' unwavering commitment to Israel's security. While in London, Lieberman is also set to meet with Great Britain's Defense Minister, Michael Fallon, following his talks with Carter. Israel lost 3-1 to Italy in its first World Cup qualifier last night in front of a sold-out stadium in Haifa. Italy stunned the home crowd when Graziano Pele tapped in a goal past helpless Israeli goalkeeper Dudu Goresh. Then in the 31st minute, Italy scored on a penalty when Israeli defender Ben Biton knocked Giacomo Benaventura to the ground. Italy dominated possession for the first 35 minutes, but then Israeli winger Tal Ben Chaim scored a beautiful chip to give Israel a fighting chance. Italy was then reduced to 10 men in the 55th minute after veteran defender Giorgio Cellini picked up his second yellow card of the evening. It revitalized the Israeli crowd, giving them hope that they could pull off a huge upset. But an Italian break in the 83rd minute sealed the deal, giving the visiting team a decisive lead. Israel's next match in the qualifiers for the World Cup will be against Fear Macedonia on October. The World Cup will be played in Russia in the summer of 2018. Local audiences are thrilled to hear that popular reggae rock singer Matis Yahu is returning on October 13th to the stunning outdoor venue of Sultan's Pool in Jerusalem. Even though the Jewish vocalist is American, he has long expressed a deep love for the Israeli capital, and in fact, the 37-year-old's special connection to the Jewish state and the people here have occasionally made him the target of anti-Israel BDS movement. Fans who want to attend the live show can already book their tickets by calling Bimot at star 6226. It's been a year since his last concert in Jerusalem, and we just can't wait. That's all for now. Stay tuned on ILTV.TV for our main daily broadcast, Playing After This. I'm Aaron Porras, and see you tomorrow with our morning briefing from Israel at 8 a.m. Eastern Time.